Hello and welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always, right here, we bring you the latest in entertainment news, in fashion, in sports, television and film from around the world. Let's get on with the show. A film celebrating Chadian women is competing for the Palm Door at this year's Cannes Film Festival. AFP has more on the festival's only entry from Sub-Saharan Africa, Lingui, which tells the story of a pregnant teenager in the poor outskirts of Chad's capital, Jamena. Check it out. Director Mohamed Saleh Haroun says the story of a Chadian adolescent's unwanted pregnancy and the conflict it creates with her country's traditions and laws is informed by the stories of strong women in his homeland. I had in mind during all the writing of the film and even during the shooting is the story of this woman that my mother told me once. Her foreign husband left to see his family and he died on the road and they never saw him again. She was left alone with her children and to survive they collected plastic bags and made ropes out of them and the children went to school like that. And it's this story that fed me in fact during the writing of the film. So they are strong women, of course. The 15-year-old is the daughter of a single mother and decides on an abortion, but faces legal and religious obstacles within her Muslim community. Haroon says that in a society where men seem to hold all the power and are rarely held accountable for their actions, the women have to find covert ways to protect themselves. We all know that in Chad, it is a very taboo subject. It is forbidden. It is a bit shameful to get pregnant without being married. Around me, no. I don't know any girls who have suffered this violence, but I believe that there are many who have experienced it, but who, out of fear, don't say anything and remain silent and live with it. And at the Cannes Caring Women in Motion Awards dinner, the jury was invited to celebrate women in film, and juror Maggie Gyllenhaal was delighted to support female filmmakers. It's exciting. I think women make movies differently than men do. And I think um, the more we support them, the more interesting stories we're going to see. Other film stars at the Lantern Lit Party in the Old French Town included Spike Lee, head of the Cannes Film Festival jury, and Salma Hayek, who spoke on the status of women in film currently. It's great that there's a lot of change. There's a, hopefully there will be more to come. But um, I think it's very different than 10 years ago. I think Actress Melanie Lauren told the Associated Press, women are increasingly represented at cons. I'm glad and, uh, and, uh, and I love the world we're living in right now with so much more power, so much more ears to listen. And I feel and I hope more respect and uh, less uh, misunderstanding. And, uh, and, and it's a year where the festival accepted to uh, choose uh, more women than, than men. And, and I love to be part of that jury. And I love uh, seeing that world giving more power to women. We have so much more work to do. And while the SP Award honors best in sports and humanitarian achievement, it was academic achievement and mental health awareness that dominated this year's conversation on the red carpet in New York. In addition to star athletes, 14-year-old Zyla Avant-Garde was invited to the event after she became the first African-American to win the annual Scripps National Spelling Bee. The New Orleans native who also holds the Guinness World Record for most basketball's dribbles simultaneously walked the red carpet and spoke of her commitment to helping other girls and minorities. So the real significance, not jokingly, is like being the first African American to win and also I believe evening out girls to boys ratio at Scripps is like really cool to me because I really would like to motivate lots of like African American children and Hispanics too, just minorities who are pushed out to like really try and like achieve, try to go for this too. Like the Indians did, they were 
pushed out major minorities too. And now, um, and then they they found something and they worked at it. Naomi Osaka returned to the spotlight for the first time since withdrawing from the French Open and skipping Wimbledon after revealing she suffers from social anxiety and depression. The tennis star posed on the red carpet before winning awards for Best Athlete in Women's Sports and Best Women's Tennis Player. Also on the red carpet was NFL player Rob Gronkowski, who believes that maintaining your uh, I mean, mental health is essential for athletes. athletes. I feel like you gotta, you know, work on yourself mentally big time, um, you know, um, no matter what position you're in, because you're dealing with a, a lot out there, um, not just on the field, but off the field. So um, I feel like to have longevity, uh, to work on your men mental health and physical health is, is what keeps you going and uh, keeps you in, in the right place. So it's crucial. Racist social media posts followed England's Euro 2020 championship loss to Italy, with the sides forced into a penalty shootout. Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sancho, and Bukayo Saka all missed their kicks, giving Italy the victory. While most comments on social media were positive towards the British team, the three black players started receiving racist comments immediately following the game. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson condemned racist social media attacks, tweeting that the team deserves, quote, to be loaded as heroes, not racially abused on social media. Those responsible for this appalling abuse should be ashamed of themselves, end quote. The British Football Association issued a statement condemning all forms of racism and standing by its players. London's police department tweeted that it was aware of the comments, calling them unacceptable and said they would be investigated. England's players made a strong stand against racism during the tournament, taking a knee before their games, including the final. Not all fans supported the gesture, with some booing in reaction. Artists like Bonaboy showed solidarity with the black players, tweeting a photo of them and writing, "Put MVPs. <music> Profile is a film by Timon Bakmembetov about an investigative journalist infiltrating online recruitment by the Islamic State group. It is the latest of a series of screen life films where everything the viewer sees happens on a computer or smartphone. VOS Penelo Pelou spoke with the filmmaker and the cast. Also known as ISIS. I created a fake. Now, because we spend 90% of our time, we spend in digital uh, uh, world. Beckman Badoff says his screen life films are immersive, allowing the viewer to click on the protagonist's computer of the story. For example, now you see me on screen, but you cannot grab my cigarettes. But in screen life you can, because you can interact with, with the reality of the character. The film can also be viewed in the traditional format, a theater screen with Abu Bilal, a London-born militant. I think it's so interesting to be able to see the interior life of the actors told through the way they text message and the way they write emails and the way they delete things and don't say things. With every Skype call and exchange of messages with Bilal, she risks having her true identity revealed. She's also falling for the terrorist and seems to consider joining him in Syria. They're both outsiders. They're both Londoners who don't quite feel like life has like, ended up where they wanted it to. Shahjad Latif, a British actor of Pakistani descent, plays the IS recruiter. He told VOA that at first he was reluctant to embody a terrorist, fearing he could be stereotyped in this type of role. He agreed to it because fundamentally, he says, it was a love story. I love you! I could see all their Skype conversations, it was verbatim. As for him being able to emote through the computer? In the last 10 years or whatever, people are more public, you know, more, more with their private feelings to a, to a computer screen than they are to the people they know, especially young people, you know. Screen life films can be produced in a little over a week on a computer screen and are cost effective. Searching, Beckman Badoff's 2018 screen life thriller about a father frantically searching for online clues in his daughter's disappearance, cost $1 million to make and grossed $75 million. Screen life doesn't cost a lot of money and it's like a writing book. You need a pen and paper and you can do whatever you want. Like immersing us into the world of Islamic State recruitment. Penelope Pulu, 
VOA News, Washington. Amy, what's going on? Former President Barack Obama is sharing his favorite reads and tunes for the summer, a tradition that he began when he was head of state. President Obama wrote, quote, while we were still in the White House, I began sharing my summer favorites and over the years, it's become a little tradition that I look forward to sharing with you all. He captioned his list on Instagram, quote, hope you enjoy them as much as I did. This year's list includes songs by Drake, Rihanna, The Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, and Jack Hall. And as for the books, The Sweetness of Water was among the favorites, which was selected as the newest addition for Oprah Winfrey's book club last month. And let's go to Hollywood, where some veteran Hollywood actors say that a law intended to help gig economy workers has the unintended consequence of threatening nonprofit theaters. Michael Sullivan has the story from Los Angeles. Actor Edward James Olmos was among the performers who showed up at a recent event supporting live local theaters, such as this one in the Los Angeles immigrant neighborhood of Boyle Heights. The theater's founder, Mexico-born Josefina Lopez, wrote the play and co-wrote the screenplay for the 2002 film Real Women Have Curves, about the struggles of immigrant women. I've been in Hollywood for over 30 years and it's been so hard to get Latino stories because they just want to do the narco stories. We're just the bad guys in a white man's story. And, uh, and so I decided to, to open my own theater so that I could produce my plays. But small theaters' tiny budgets are being strained. These actors say many of those who work in the nonprofit venues are volunteers, but are included under a new state law that gives gig economy workers, such as Uber and Lyft drivers, a guaranteed minimum income. But there's no way we can do that. And if we have to treat every actor like an employee, maybe we can do one show a year and that's it. A bill making its way through the California legislature would offer a lifeline, say its proponents, by creating a state-administered payroll system and offering grants to small nonprofit performance groups. But critics object to an expanded arts bureaucracy. Some labor groups worry, too, that workers in nonprofit theaters face exploitation. But the bill has many supporters, including Hollywood veteran Edward James Olmos. I mean, it's like anything else. You have to have a training ground, and the kids deserve it. Success in show business usually comes after many years. Another Hollywood star, Danny Glover, recalls performing in a small theater with 10 people on stage and just five in the audience. But he says each performance is important. We're going to need all the heart, all the art we can, all the insight we can, all the story we can. Glover co-founded a small Los Angeles theater to highlight the black experience and says theaters like that need help. A Hollywood colleague agrees, saying small theaters teach people to appreciate each other. It's really important that we that we learn empathy, that we learn how to be with other people, that we learn to understand who they are and, and have them understand who we are so that we can keep this extraordinary thing called democracy intact. Mike O'Sullivan, VOA News, Los Angeles. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Bungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at VOANews.com. We're also on all social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Remember to share, subscribe, and like. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.